Hello fellow VSFers! In this tutorial you will learn how to utilize the concept of cache in your view storefront 2 project. Cache can be implemented on the server side and on the client side. But first, to get a better understanding of how cache really works, let's scroll down to the diagram in our docs this one. The cache, how it will work is whenever a page is requested, so a user would like to see the product page, for example, there will be a question asked whether this page is already in cache. If no, the page will be rendered on your view storefront 2 application. And if it will contain some tags or some rules that this page should be cached, it will be saved in the cache so that the next request to this certain page when it will be asked whether it is in cache or not if it will be there and it will be there because this is the second time that we are seeing this accessing this page we will just send the result from the cache instead of rendering the page this can improve the performance of the second load of your page by a huge amount. As I mentioned, we can utilize the concept of cache in your ViewStorefront 2 application both on the server side and on the client side. On, in the first part of this video, we will focus actually on the client side and how we can utilize the browser cache to cache certain requests. If you get lost at certain point, no worries, we have the documentation of on both client side and server side. The client cache is implemented by using the package that we have created at View Storefront called HTTP cache. It is an X module, so we can register it in the modules array with the certain configuration. This is the default configuration, and if we want to be a bit more advanced, we can use the match root and in this record we will pass the path. So for example, here it will be home page, here it will be product page and here it will be category page. And in here we will pass the value of the cache control header that we want to set for this certain endpoint. Let's go right now to the code and see how it is already implemented in the commerce tools integration. I'm currently in the nuxtconfig.js file and if I scroll down to this modules array I will see that there is already this viewsterfront HTTP cache module registered with certain routes. So if we inspect this in our browser in our application, go here and inspect, we will go to the network and let's refresh the page. If we inspect this first file called localhost, you will see that it indeed has the cache control header set with the value that we have provided from the nuxconfig.js file. And just to test it out, if we comment this module and when wait for the page to reload, once the page is reloaded, when we inspect the, the same document, we won't see those cache control headers anymore. This is how the cache control header works in the browser cache. The next step would be to understand how cache can be implemented on the server side. And for that, we also have some packages from view storefront. We have view storefront cache package and also the driver because in order to store the cached result on the server side, we need to have some driver, for example, Redis. And in order to implement this cache on the server side with Redis, you also have another page in our documentation, which is focusing specifically on this Redis cache implementation. So you will need those two packages 
View Store Font Cache and View Store Font Redis Cache. And we will need this kind of configuration. So we will set the enable to true. We can also define some rules for the invalidation, like for example, the URL for invalidating the cache. And the most important part, the driver. We will pass the name of the driver that we want, Redis Cache. We will set the default timeout and the configuration for IO, for IO Redis. So we will pass the host, the port and the password if needed. For the Redis part, I have already created a Docker image or Docker Compose file with this Redis image running. So I have this Redis storage locally on my system. To connect to it, I am using Table Plus, which is like universal client for several different types of databases. So you can use one client to connect to MySQL, PostgreSQL, Redis, and MongoDB. So in order to connect this Redis to our to store our cached pages, we will use this configuration right here. Let's copy it and paste here. We'll add the comma. For now, we won't be using the invalidation. We will just focus on the driver. I have already installed the Viewster font cache and Viewster font Redis cache, so you should do it beforehand. My database is on localhost and it's on the default port 6379 and it doesn't use any password. For the production environment, make sure to use the password to secure this storage. This is the part for the configuration of the module itself. But next, we need to configure a few things as well. Apart from the configuration, we also need to use the tags. Tags are used to store certain page in your... In order to use this server cache from our view stuff onto application, we will be using tags. And tags will look something like this. So it will have the letter, which will, for example, be category or product, and the certain ID or Slack for this kind of website or this kind of page. So in order to use those tags, what we'll need to do right now is we'll need to go to our certain page. And I will go to the category. And in here, what I will do is I will import, but not here, here, I will import the two things from Vuster font cache package. So import use use cache and add sorry cache tag prefix from at view storefront cache and also in here what I will also do is I will also in here import use root because I will be using this use root to get the slack of the certain category that I can store in the storage, in the Redis, to be more precise. And then we'll go to here, to our own SSR hook. And in here, what I will do is I will go const add tags from use cache. And this is this method that will be used to add tags for the certain page. I will also use const root equals use root. And in on SSR lifecycle hook, I will go add tags and I will pass an object of tags. So each of them will have uh, I will pass an array, sorry, of objects 
and they both will be quite similar. So they will have a prefix. And for that, we'll be using cache tag cache tag prefix. And we will be using a view. And we will pass a value category because this is our category page. And for the second tag here, we will go with category and the value will be root dot value dot params dot slug one. And this structure is actually how the structure of the category page is constructed. Because if we go to our application right now and go to main category, we will see that it's slash C for category and slash man. And this is this slug one. So we will save it and let's see how it affects the time of loading our document here. We see 700 milliseconds at first and when we reload the page, we will see that the time for fetching this document is right now only 61 milliseconds. And it's actually done by Redis because we stored the content of this whole website or this whole certain sub page in our Redis storage. And we can verify that by going into our table plus here. And right here, we, we see three records. We see data page, which is actually the content of our page stored in here. And we have the tags for category and for um, certain slack. So we have C, men. So this is how you implement both client cache and server cache in your views Dorfund 2 application. Make sure to let us know in the comments what next topics you would like us to cover in the next videos.